Hello there, I'm Andrew Lucy, and welcome back of Cool Stew. Let's play some more Aurora 4X. Today, we're going to be building, or at least starting, the design of our military uh, vessels, our proper fleet. Not just some cheap stopgap pulsars, we're talking a proper military. So, firstly, I've gone and I've cancelled the research rate, and I'm actually going to get us the max jump squadron size 4. Uh, this is going to take a little while to pop through. We'll design other ships until we need this. But the reason I've done this is because our ships need to be able to go through places that don't have jump gates. They need a jump drive. Now, jump drives normally can actually take people with them. Normally it's three, but you can increase that. And so by grabbing this, we can take four people with us. That means that we don't actually have all of our ships needing jump drives. We just need the biggest ship, probably. It doesn't have to be the biggest ship, but otherwise you're wasting a little bit of the jump drive space. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our bigger ships have jump drives, and they're actually then going to have squadron size four, which means that there can be four people in a jump group. The ship which has the jump drives and three others. That's going to be a lot better for us than three, because three is iffy. Four is, I think, where you get the you get the real bang for your buck. It doesn't mean that the size of the jump drive goes up by 10%, though. So, uh, we will get that, but in the meantime, we're going to have a quick look at this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is the list of stuff we talked about a minute ago on stream was we were deciding our ship. So we've got a 15k battleship here. A 15, uh, 11k battleship. This is actually more like a command ship now. I'll change that to command. Uh, and then we have a 9k escort. So the way that I've broken down the class names, for those of you wondering, is I've added a new line here. So carriers and command ships are now military figures. Battleships, it doesn't mean battleships as in the class, it means a ship that is designed to take out other ships. It's, a, it's an anti-ship, ship combatant. Um, that's a historical battle. And escort ships, ones that are designed specifically to work with or protect other ships in the fleet, are song lyrics and titles. So this is a command ship. It's going to be our jump ship. It's going to have um, command, should I should just be sensor. Uh, fuel, probably a little bit more fuel because it's a jump ship. It's going to go out system, so when we're using this, we can take extra fuel of us. Uh, and then we're going to have our 11k battleship, which is going to be a missile boat slash missile sensor. And then a PD boat slash PD sensor down here for our escort. So that's going to be in charge of shooting down incoming missiles. And we'll probably have a variant that has a more powerful sensor to be able to detect those missiles at longer range. And then the missile boat is going to do the same thing. Have a variant that has a bigger sensor so we can fire missiles at a longer range. This one is going to be mainly our, like, detect enemy fleet ship. It's going to be, the where is the enemy fleet? They're over there. Let's go that direction. It's not going to be designed for much more than that. Anything else we can get in is the bonus. The main part is to have that jump drive and to have a sensor that's capable of detecting enemies at a good range. A bit of extra fuel. Probably some weapons. So, we're going to open up this screen. Hello. Uh, we're going to start work, I think, first on the PD ship. Because I think that's going to be the easiest one to do. We're aiming for 9,000 tons on this ship. So, first things first. We're going to hit new. Uh, this is going to be the... I believe we're going to name these... These class of PD ships after S Club 7 songs. So, this is the... Uh, rename. The I think the Don't Stop Moving... The Don't Stop Moving class. No, no, maybe this should be the Bring It All Back. This should be the Bring It All Back. Yeah, the Bring It All Back class. And since they're escorts designed to protect our ships, they are Destroyer Escort. And we have that done. Right, let's remove that fuel storage. So, deployment time, we're just going to set this to 12 for now. Uh, engineering space is just going to add a few more of those because I'm aware that we're going to need probably four. Or might need more actually, but leave it for that moment. Doesn't need a jump drive, does need an engine. Now, of course, we have our lovely formula. Um, the velocity of the ship times the mass of the ship divided by 50,000 equals the necessary EP to get to that velocity. So we need to decide what our minimum speed is going to be for this fleet. It's a pretty early fleet. I'm going to say 4,000 is our minimum. 4,000 is our minimum. So I prefer to get five. So we'll call it. Split the difference, say 4,500. So we want a 4,500 speed. Um, this is going to be a 9,000 ton ship. And we want to uh, divide by 50,000. 
So we're going to need 810 EP to hit that. Just double check my maths there. Uh, times by 9,000. Bye bye. Yeah, 810. If we were going to go for like, say, 5,000 kilometers per second. Nine hundred. We could try for nine hundred EP. We could try for nine hundred EP. So we don't actually have any decent military drives. I mean, we have this one. It's very small. It's two hundred tons. It's smaller than I really, uh, really go for with these. So we're going to design a tech. And the general rule of thumb again is a third of your craft should be made up of engine and fuel. Maybe, maybe forty percent. So we're going to. Go. We're going to find ourselves an engine. And we are going to set this to... We could probably go for one engine at 2,500 tons. Because we'll get the efficiency for going for one engine. We will lose the redundancy, though. Like, one engine goes down, we're dead in the water. The alternative would be going for, like, two 1,500s. Which is tempting. We'll see. Right. And we said we need... There we go. That's easily done. We've got ourselves there with over 900 EP of... Go for 1,000 EP. Again, you can you can back work this. So if we go calc... Uh, we need to find velocity. So we get our EP, which is 1,000. Uh, we times by 50,000. And then we want to divide by the mass. That will give us a velocity of 5,555. That's going to be relatively fast. I don't think we need that velocity necessarily. Now, of course, if we were going to go with two slightly smaller engines, we would want to go with something like U. And we could get that fuel all the way down to maybe there. And that will take up more room. Uh, the fuel usage will be about 340. Let's check that. Yeah, we'd save. We'd lose 500 tons, though, but we'd get redundancy. I think that it is only an escort, so I'm not as fussed about redundancy. In a big ship, I would be. But I think we'll take the redundancy option. Um, yeah, we could cut down a little bit on that. Yeah. You know what? We'll leave the energy for now. We know roughly what we need. What we definitely need to do is talk about the armament, because this ship is defined by its armament. It is our anti-missile ship. It can also maybe take out ships at really close range, but it's going to be very much anti-missile ship, and what we're going to need is we're going to need a gauze cannon. I don't believe we have any design. We're just going to double check that. Yeah, no. So we're going to go, we're going to set gauze cannon. We want fire rate three. I think launch velocity doesn't matter. Because that's just max range, which for us is not going to be that important because we're going to be shooting at point blank missiles. I'm going to glance over at chat for this because I, I believe that we have people in chat who are experts, but I'm pretty sure that launch velocity won't actually make a difference. Now, it doesn't actually make a difference to the cost of the thing, though. So why would I not go for max? Hmm. I thought that cheap would make it, uh, less launch velocity would make it cheaper, but it actually doesn't. It doesn't seem to affect the cost. For most other things, that's actually true. It doesn't appear to be for the case of gauze cannons, so... Eh, I'll take the launch velocity. And then, size versus accuracy. Here's the big one. We can make this smaller. So we can bring it down to, you know, this big, which is 25 tons. For 8% of the size. Uh, for 8% accuracy, sorry. But we could go and put it up to 300 tons for 100% accuracy. We need every accuracy bit we can get. This is an anti-missile weapon. Missiles are fast, missiles are hard to hit. We need it to be 100% size, no questions asked. So we're going to go Gauze Cannon, Fire Rate 3, 100% Accuracy. Uh, launch Velocity is always going to be max, but I will put um, Rate to Fire 3, Velocity 3, 100%, uh, and this is 300 tons. I believe that's got all the applicable text involved. There we go. We're going to instant that. And then we're going to hit turret design. And this is where we're going to get interesting. So 
what we have here is the turret design. Now, we could stick this gun on the front of our ship. The problem is that it will be fixed on our ship. It literally is bolted onto the hull. It will be bolted on and it will point in one direction. And the ship will have to move to actually fire the gun. Which means that the gun's tracking speed is the speed of the ship. The speed at which it can target and retarget will be not great. Um, we can put it on a turret, though. If you put it on a turret, suddenly the turret tracking speed becomes important. So what this says here is the turret tracking speed. For 4,000 kilometers per second of tracking speed, you will need 10% of the turret to be gear. Again, we could upgrade that, so we could say desired tracking speed is like 8,000. Notice that rotation gear is now 20%, because it's twice as much speed. We want twice as much. Uh, what we should probably check is our beam fire control. So the beam fire control speed rating is 4,000. You can see this over here, fire control speed rating is 4,000. Here's the thing, when you design a turret, you get options. You also get options when you design a beam fire control system. So, I know gauze is not a beam as such, it is projectiles, but it's treated as a beam. Like, you point it in direction, you fire it, it hits an object, it travels in a straight line. I know it isn't necessarily a beam, but it's kind of similar. At least similar enough that it uses a beam fire control. Here's one of the important options. Fire control size versus tracking speed. Normal size, normal speed. If we make that four times size, we get four times tracking speed. Suddenly the tracking speed of our beam is now 1600 kilometers per second, which means it can hit something at 1600 kilometers per second. I think with 50% accuracy, or it might be, it might be 100 accuracy up to that or something, whatever. The point being, that is the, the effective limit of our tracking speed. Now, when you are shooting an object, if your beam fire control tracking speed is amazing, but your ship can't move that fast, it doesn't matter. Your, your gun will turn as fast as you can turn it. If your ship can turn really fast, but your fire control can't actually track that fast, sure, you can spin in circles, but your software's not going to be able to catch the missile. It's not going to be able to target it for you. Your tracking speed will be either your gun tracking speed, i.e. the turret, or if you're not using a turret, the ship, the, literally the ship speed, or the beam fire control speed rating which you know is times by four here so we want them to be the same because it will pick the lowest of the two so if we make this amazing and this is crap over here it will use this if this is amazing and that's crap it will use this so you want them to be the same the reason it says the fire control speed rating and the tra tracking speed here is so that you can compare we know we want this to be four times you always get the option for four times. So what we need to do is make this four times that. So we need 16,000. So we're actually going to change this to 16, which means that 40% of it is going to be gear. And I know that is like, yeah, mate, suddenly your gun is like 40% gear rather than gun. You could just have more gun. Why would you not have more gun? The reason being is that if your gun's massive, but you can't hit missiles, who cares? Like this is an anti-missile ship. Doesn't matter what you're doing. We can also make it a quad. We can put four guns. And you get a slight saving. You can see here that our rotation gear no longer takes up 40%, it only takes up 36%. Uh, the gear size, etc. Everything everything is slightly more efficient. But, it does mean that you've put four weapons into one turret. And turrets are somewhat disadvantaged because they sit outside your armor. Your armor covers the internals on the ship. Your ship is based like a bean can or something. Like it is, it is a big cylinder with stuff inside. If you put a gun on the outside and have to rotate it, it has to be bolted on the outside of the armor. If you do that, you need to then put armor on your turret. And, you know, if we want to put, like, you know, five armor, suddenly you're looking at the... What does it say? Turret size. 53. It was previously 32. We're talking about a much bigger turret. So, we'll probably put on, like, maybe one armor for now, just so it's a little bit protected. And if we go quad, we end up with a turret size of 36, which 30 is uh, 1.5 kilotons. So this is you know, 1,600 tons of turret. That's expensive. But it is quad. 12 shots, because we have uh, R3, 
the third tier of Gore's fire rate. The rate of fire is three. We fire three shots every time we fire. Because we've got four of them, because it's a quad, we fire 12 shots. That means 12 shots that can take down 12 missiles. It's very unlikely to. They'd have to be really crappy missiles. Oh, apparently the turret armor code is bugged that makes it four times as large as it should be. That explains it for me. I was wondering why the turrets were quite so ridiculous. Apparently, uh, thank you very much, somebody. Thank you, Twitch chat. Um, apparently armor should not cost that much. That explains it. Because there is no way that armor five here to match your ship should double the cost of a turret. That's, that's what, I mean, ju I just have a second turret. Um, and don't worry, your 12 shots can get spread between different missiles. Alternatively, you know, you can build two twins and we'll be taking up like two more size and you'd get, you know, the benefit of if one of them goes down, the other one will still be viable. Um, I want to try and get two turrets on this ship. It's 9,000 tons. We've probably got about 3,000 tons left. So I think we could get two triples. I don't think we could get two quads. I think quads would be pushing it. What if we reduce the armor? Yeah. Yeah, we could probably get two quads. We could probably get two quads. With zero armor. It's a risk. It's a risk. Uh, bear in mind that if they hit the turret, it doesn't instantly die. The turret has a HTK hit to kill of eight. Which I believe means that it's a 1 in 8 chance if it takes 1 damage that the turret will just get destroyed. Or, or you know, damaged or whatever. Um, I believe that is the case. I think it's hit to kill means that there is a 1 in 8 chance, not that it takes 8 hits to kill it. So, I think what we'll do is we'll go with the quad. Quad gores, blah blah blah. It stores all the information correctly there. And we will create. Now note that there is no instant button here. And yes, I am going to instant this, so we're going to bring up the research. We're going to go to Missiles Kinetics and... Oh, no, you'll be in beam because you're a turret. Okay. Quad. Instant. Right. And then if we bring back the class design, quickly change to refresh that if we need to. There we go. You see the Gauze Cannon, we also see the Quad which is uh, just over 1,600 tons. We'll try and add two of those. Now, we already know what we need to go with this. We've talked about it. Beam fire control. And we need the speed to be four times. The range, actually, we don't really care about. The range could be, could be crap for all we care about. Now, bear in mind that this is a linear progression in range. So at uh, roughly linear, at this range, we have 5% chance of hitting. We probably don't save that much size. Remember, this is only 25 tons currently. I can probably leave it like normal. Hell, if we really, really wanted, we could go four times size, four times range. It would cost us 400 tons. If we cared that much. Um, I'm instead probably just going to put it on one times, one times. Just because we don't actually desperately need it. Um, people bring up the point, by the way, that at longer range, at, if you go for a longer range weapon, it has more chances to intercept a missile. Uh, that's incorrect for two factors. Firstly, um, a missile is going to travel, you know, 40,000 kilometers per second. Every second, that is, it's going to travel that distance. Ticks in the game of five seconds. The missile will have gone in and out of that range easily. Unless the missile is incredibly slow. Secondly, uh, when you give them orders to defend the convoy, or the group, or the fleet, or whatever. They inst instead, they basically fire at one fixed point. It says, when do you want to fire? Do you want to fire at this range? Cool. Fire at this range as it comes into range. Because missiles will just enter your envelope and be out the other side before you have a chance to fire. You will never, I don't think you will ever, at least to my knowledge, encounter a missile that you could possibly fire at multiple times, with especially this tier of Gauss Cannon. So we don't really care too much about this. And 300 tons is going to be helpful. That's, what, 3% the entire ship mass? An extra 300 tons. Uh, yeah, 3% of the ship's mass. Uh, chat is telling me, though, that they're, because of the linear progression, you still want some sort of bonus. My query, though, then, to chat back, 
is that, well, surely you just tell your gun to fire at one kilometer range or whatever. You tell your gun to fire at, you know, 1,000 kilometer range. So, you know, the difference between 10,000 and the difference between uh, 20,000 or more won't make a huge difference at all, right? Ah, uh, the minimum range... F okay, apparently the minimum range for point-blank fire is always 10,000 kilometers. Regardless. Anything below that counts as 10,000. It doesn't tell you that, which is helpful. Um, but it is actually the case. Okay, in which case we do want 40,000 because the penalty is 40,000, you've got 50-50 chance to hit something. That's that tracking speed or less. Obviously, missiles are going to be above that, so it's going to reduce our accuracy. But if we're firing... At 40,000, we get 50% chance to hit. If it goes down to 10,000, there'll still be a penalty. So we actually do want to go max on this. Fair enough. So you can ignore everything I just said. So this is a... I'm actually just going to completely change the name of this. So this is going to be a BFC, Beam Fire Control, with a uh, range of 40k kilometers. I know I hate calling it killer, killer kilometers, but whatever. Uh, the tracking speed, so the TS, is 16k and it has a 400 ton. There we go. Uh, we'll instant that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We'll bring that into the fold. Now, notice it had an error message down here that beam weapon but no fire control. And now it's happy. So, we already are perfectly viable. Now, for a Gauze Cannon, you don't need ammo. It's assumed that the Gauze Cannon has all the ammo in it. It doesn't need to fire a particularly large projectile that's just firing a lot of energy. So, you don't need to have any ammo. The only thing that uses ammo in the entire game is missiles. Energy weapons need, like, power plants on board, but they don't fire the power plant. The power plant doesn't deplete. It just needs a power plant. So, the only weapon that actually needs ammo, if you're wondering, is missiles. Which make missiles, uh, problematic, but great at the same time. They have a huge range. They outrange every other weapon in the game by millions! Dozens of millions, literally sometimes, sometimes hundreds of millions of kilometers. Downside is you can run out of them and you will run out of them. So, um, we're going to chuck our gauze on here. It's a good early game point defense. It doesn't need a power plant. It can get three shots out of each one. Each shot will only do one damage. That will always be the case with gauze. You can't up the damage. You can up the number of shots though. So less good for killing ships, but great at killing missiles. Uh, and we're then going to probably want to put some armor on this. I'm going to say like eight. Eight is kind of my minimum. I used to play my minimum being six, but I think the more the better. Uh, and we then have a little less than 4,000 spare. Now, we don't have an active sensor. We do want active sensors. And here's the issue that we're going to encounter now. Previously, when we were designing our fast attack ships, we designed them. So that any one ship could also be as active and as useful as all the other ships. This is not the case with this class. Uh, we are going to probably design them so that there's a slight variant. And this is going to get complicated. Um, I want to design the fast attack ships just as a, this is the example, easy, build, done. This is going to be a little bit more complex. What we're going to do is we're going to make two very similar ships. One is the destroyer escort, which is why I chose destroyer escort rather than just destroyer. Uh, and the next one is going to be the Destroyer Leader. The Destroyer Leader is probably going to drop one of these Gauze Cannons in exchange for a very useful sensor that's going to be able to detect incoming missiles at a decent range. Um, I probably will want to give all of them some form of active sensor, just so that they have the ability, just in case. Uh, but it's probably not going to be much use. So, let's just check. If we wanted to get our ability to see size 6 missiles at a reasonable range, you know... We'd be talking 100 ton. And this is, you know, less than a quarter of a million kilometers. That's enough to see them before they impact. I'm happy to chuck a 100 ton um, sensor on this and be happy with that. We'd probably need a more powerful one for anything above that. Now, bear in mind that this also doesn't include any sort of long range detection sensor. Uh, nothing to see an enemy fleet. It's very much an escort vessel, and it will remain an escort vessel. So, we're going to call you the ass. Um, I will include that the sensor strength is it's an ass 21. 
I've decided to include that from now on because it will actually help knowing if we need to upgrade something. Uh, you have a size 6 at 2 to 9 killer kilometers. And do you need anything else? We need the tonnage. So 100 tons. I don't think we need anything else in the description. Like, you know, you're a 100 ton sensor. You know what you're looking for at what range. It's a pretty easy description. So, the S21. Do we need anything else on the ship? And I, I don't think we do. I think that's it. Which means that we have... 3,750 tons remaining. So if we were going to go to engines, we could make... Engine of size... Uh, 30. Which is 1,500 tons. We could have two of these. We already know we need 900 EP. Done. And then we'd need 750 tons of fuel. I think this will work fine. Uh, it's only going to have a modifier of 1.05 fuel consumption, which is good. Well, that's the engine power. The fuel consumption is 1.13. Eh, it's fine. Uh, the alternative, that's three, that's 480, right? The alternative would be crank you up. And, oh, you would save us 90. Oh, that is a good saving. That is a good saving. If the engine gets taken out, it does stop working, though. I think for an escort ship, this is fine, but I wouldn't normally do it. Uh, I wouldn't normally do it. We're going to call the, the MMPD. This saves us mass, and it also saves us fuel efficiency. So you're the military MPD with a fuel usage of... Oh, do the tonnage first. 2.5 kilotons and an F of 391. And that's 800 tons left. So we'll grab a large fuel storage or two now check the maintenance life as predicted we're not quite up to the max yet but as predicted I went oh, four engine spaces are probably enough pretty much bang on a year average failure rate of 153% so they're certain they'll have probably one and a half failures every year so one every eight months the range is 24.2 billion kilometers that tends to be what I aim for we have a little bit of spare space. Enough to get another armor rating. And then could we get an engineering space? Yeah, we can. Okay. Is there anything else we could do here? Maybe probably up the deployment time a tiny bit? Not quite. I'm going to go 12.8. I'm not even sure the point works. There we go. So this is exact size is 8,999 tons. Um, we're using two large fuel stores. Twitch chat, by the way, brings up the excellent point that if you have enough boronide, you should probably be building smaller ones. Here's the thing, right? Have a quick look at this. Fuel store. 50,000 fuel. Large, 250,000 fuel. The size, 50, 250. So effectively, they are the same ratio. You get no size saving for having a larger fuel vessel. You get a money saving. The cost is only three times, not five times. However, if your one fuel store gets taken out, and it's a large one, you lose five times the amount of fuel. Twitch chat brings up the excellent point that if you've got enough boronide, you should be using normal fuel stores. 
Or hell, even small fuel stores, but I'm not going to go quite that far. So yeah, I'm going to just put 10 fuel stores on. That way, if someone accidentally like blows up or we actually get shot and it damages a fuel store, we still have plenty of fuel left. Um, people are st still saying they're concerned about the one engine. I think since it is an escort ship, one engine is fine. Normally, I would totally agree. But since it's an escort ship and it's relatively early game and this is our bottom tier, I think this is a pretty solid ship for that. So we're going to lock the design. Then we're going to... Uh, duplicate, copy design, and we're going to rename, and I think we'll use the same naming scheme, because it's just the command variant, so this is the don't stop moving, uh, yeah, don't stop moving, or bring it all back CC maybe, yeah, we'll just call bring it all back CC, but we'll have to rename the ship, uh, you are the Descoyer, the Descoyer, Descoyer, or maybe we should use something similar, like, uh... Oh god, what, what's similar to S-Club? Similar artists. Who's a similar artist? <laughs> Call it the radio edit. Yeah, this is a bring all back radio edit. Boyzone, uh... No, sort of, sort of, but I was like... Like S-Club, like, uh, one of those very formulaic... Steps is who I was thinking. Less well known, though. Um. You know what? They are the same one. We'll just call it the CC. They are, they're effectively the same chassis, it's just we're going to switch out one gauze cannon. Let's just check, component summary, a gauze cannon is 23.7% of total. Okay, so right, here's the rule I'm going to let you in on. Shipyards, I've said this before, but shipyards can build different ships, provided they are substantially similar. If two ships are substantially similar, if you retool to build one, you can also build the other. Until now, we've been using that to build modifications of our ships when we build, like, an improvement, an upgrade. You know, we were like, oh, we forgot to add a cargo handling system. The cargo handling system's pretty small. It doesn't matter. We can just chuck that on. Okay? Up until now, we've only been using that ability to make small upgrades and changes. What we're doing here is we're building a variant. So you will need to know exactly what the rule is. Specifically, if the refit cost is, I think it's 20%, but somebody's telling me in chat that it's 25%. If the refit cost is less than 25% the cost of the ship, i.e. the change is less than 25%, it might be if you're adding less than 25% or it's changing 20 either way. Basically, if you're changing a certain amount of the ship, I think it's 25 then, according to chat. Um, you can build the same ship from two different places. Now, looking at our gorse cannon, we're going to get rid of one of those to put a bigger sensor on. Two of them is, this is the cost here, right? 24%, give or take. One of them will be 12%. Uh, so we can get rid of one and replace it with a sensor. Now, bear in mind, we've got to check what the sensor cost is. But if we get rid of one of our gauze cannons, uh, I think I just got rid of both of them by mistake because I had 10 selected. I did. Excellent. I'm clever. Uh, we'll get that back on. We can then spend this remaining... 1900 tons uh, the gauze cannon has people and the people have to have places to work etc you get the idea uh, and we can add you a much bigger more better sensor now we could probably add two sensors let's just check what the sensor here is rated at ah, it's rated as tiny so yeah we can get rid of this sensor as well and active grav sensor Make it the smallest size possible, and then we're going to up this size to, you know, probably somewhere in the region of... I want to detect... Maybe not quite that large. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe two million... Maybe two million. Yeah, let's do it. So this is the AS21, which sees size 6 at a range of... 
two million kilometers. <coughs> and then we can add a couple of other things um, as well. Uh, namely, we'll probably put a ship detection system on board, just in case the ship operates alone or in a group. Sorry, I'm being slowly killed here. We could go larger, I'm thinking. Let's see. How large could we go? Um, yeah, make it three million. And we will also note down that this is 1.3 kilotons. Right. That's all good. I don't need any more information. Bam. How much we got left? 450 tons. We could put a thermal on for that. I don't really care so much. I'm going to have my active sensors on all the time. Uh, what we'll probably do is we'll just put in a anti-ship sensor for detecting fax or something. Just in case the enemy have fax or they have fighters. There we go. So we'll be able to detect 250 ton objects at a range less than our missile sensor. But we'll be able to detect facts at a range of 28 million kilometers. So if the enemy has small craft, we should see them coming. Our uh, big problem will be if they have 250 ton objects, we'll see them at 3 million. We could even change the size of this and be like, look, this is uh, specifically if they come in like this size. Yeah, 25 million. Upgrade the size slightly. 30 million almost. Yeah, so if they bring fast attack craft, we should be okay. That's 21. Hopefully this will fit on board. Uh, you are designed to see 800 ton at 29 million kilometers. And you are 350 tons. And I can increase the deployment time as well. <laughs> Only slightly, but there we go. Uh, and we check the component summary. Oh, that is 26.6% for that sensor alone. That's annoying. 7.2% for that sensor. I need to strip like 9% out. All right, chat's telling me that I can check what craft can be... Oh, refit cost. Okay. Refit cost from... Bring it all back. Yeah. So there's a refit cost. I assume that would be zero if it was the same or substantially similar. Let's see. Let's, let's remove... Uh, the box above. Wait, wait. Chat's telling me the box above here. Bring it all back. Oh, eligible additional classes if this is the primary class for a shipyard. Okay. Aha! Right. 
if we make the shipyard build to bring it all back, it will not be able to bring it. It will not be able to bring it all back CC. But if we make the shipyard build to bring it all back CC, it can build to bring it all back. There we go. So if we have somewhere toward for the bring it all back CC, we can actually build the bring it all back there. But we couldn't do it the other way around because of the way percentage works. There we go. Don't ask me. It's annoying and weird and complicated, but it, it does work. So we can, provided we tool for the command variant, we can actually build the bring it all back originally. No eligible, eligible. No eligible, eligible. No eligible, eligible. There you go. So that is the bring it all back. Uh, I know we spent 40 minutes. We've spent the entire episode designing this ship. I don't think we've actually clicked forwards in time once. Hi, welcome to Aurora. Um, but I wanted to make sure we went in depth over the designing of a ship. Because, hey, if you're playing along, you'll need to figure out this stuff on your own if you don't have this. And that means you'll just get nowhere because it's it's going to be slow to figure that out. So there we go. That is our bring it all back. And I think you're good enough that we will. I should probably lock that. Let's lock that before I do something very silly. Bring it all back CC. Lock design. Go over here. Shipyard task. My shipyard. There we go. 9,000 ton. Retool for. Bring it all back. And make sure we select the CC. The destroyer leader. Note that because it's more expensive. Ooh, by 600, it'll be built. Uh, it'll be retooled in December, not November. Retool for you. That leaves us with two remaining ones. Uh, the 10,000. Well, it's going to be 11,000. So I think we will continue to expand the capacity. And we will go forwards in time by like five days or something. And then check. Nah, it's going to take about a month. Okay. We'll go forward for 30 days. Oh, hello. Why was I dragged here? I'm, un I'm confused. Why was I dragged here? New oh, minerals discovered on Wintermute Comet A1. Is that no? That's not why. That's nice, but new jump point discovered between the Avinian system and the Glass. Oh, oh, that's annoying. That's gonna make my ready. Boop. Uh, yeah, actually, we can we can just adjust this. So the Avinian system actually collects to glass box. Actually, works out okay. Put you in a straight line, I think. So we've discovered a connection between Avindian and Glassbox. That's fine by me. Uh, you'll need to just jump box back to Avindian and then go through and explore jump point three. Sure. That means Avindian is two jumps or three jumps away, which, whatever. And shipyard. Still working on getting that capacity up. Give me another 30 days. Okay, you finished your survey here. Uh, we could go to Wintermute, but that's three jumps. I think what we'll do is we'll go to Williamson. Or Ron in flight. I think Williamson is probably the good call. So, if you can jump to Wintermute, uh, sorry, Glass Box, then Scenic Giant, then Williamson. We'll do another 30 days. Oh, 
Okay. We found Glees 1. We have an active research lab. Right, firstly, let's deal with that research lab. Um, let's just check power propulsion. I really want to get this for our missiles, but we can't yet, which is frustrating as all hell. Just give me a decent power propulsion person, for God's sake. Uh, right, let's give you a buff. Terraform rate buff doesn't matter because we're still working on Terraform. We won't actually have any of those available for quite a while. Might actually just delay you. Because our Terraform is not going to be ready for quite some time. Whereas getting a bonus to our max jump size is going to be important because that's when we're going to build our new ship. Um, we'll also need to rename the system in a minute. We'll also want to check on you. You still haven't got to 11,000. It's going to take a little while. Our uh, next one is the Oscar system. Okay. Rename system. You are the Oscar system. Yeah, and there's an error. Ooh. Oscar 2 is... Maybe. Maybe, okay. Hmm. All right, back to solve. Boop. Look at those lovely mineral packets all getting shot up there. Back down to Earth. Okay, we did a call for people who weren't around. Uh, you're good. Okay, keep going. Okay, we completed max uh, squadron jump size. We added a slipway. Great. You are 11,000, so you can stop now. No activity set. You need to get an extra 200 tons, so we will get you to continue capacity expansion. And you are halfway done to being able to build they bring it all back class, which is going to be amazing. Right. I think this is where we end the episode. I know not a lot of time has passed. We spent the entire episode designing a military craft. In future, I'm going to jump in and out of the designing process a little bit more. And as we get on and design more craft, I'll spend less time focusing on the designing process and more on the end product. And I'll uh, I'll talk about the designing process on Twitch and stuff, but I'll cut it out from the videos. Uh, I think the next couple, I will talk about them still a fair bit just because we are designing them and their roles. And effectively, we're going to talk a lot about missile theory. And we'll be designing some new missiles, because this is a missile ship, and this is a... Eh, it does whatever the other ships don't do. Maybe we'll put some anti-missile missiles on it or something. We'll give it a role. We need anti-missiles in some regard, because they're amazing. They're really, really good. Uh, but for now, I've been Andrew Elysium. Hope you've liked. If you have liked, you know, do the whole like thing. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. But until next time, do feel free to stay shiny.